Okay, so very sadly, the day has come that I have to sell the probably the best car I've ever owned, my Ionic Electric here in the UK, which I bought secondhand and have had for about a year and a half, about 13,000 miles in it. Did this interesting 1,000 mile road trip in it without any planning, uh, using all the various newer networks in the UK. Really enjoyed having the car, but here's the story of me selling it and the end of one chapter and the beginning of another, hopefully, with um, EV life in Denmark. Hopefully, we'll see how that goes. So let's just cover the sale experience of the car in this video. <laughs> So here's me in the car, ready to set off. My last journey in the Ionic Electric after, you know, I've never had a car that I've started making YouTube videos about. It's kind of been a special car for me. It's still just a thing, it's still just a car, but I wanted to kind of record this uh, last drive in the car. It wasn't a particularly eventful drive. It was followed by an absolutely crazy train ride back, which shows two things. It shows, you know, why people unfortunately pretty much have to have cars in the UK, um, you know, most of the time, in most people's circumstances, if you're outside of a big city, and, you know, how nice it is in contrast to have an electric car where you've got not very much, you know, road and wind noise to, to speak of, and you can have music on if you want, and you pretty much control your own sort of fairly tranquil environment, and then being rammed on public transport in a crazy party environment, as you'll see later. But first, have a listen to this. And that. And now that. So it's really surprising how much difference, you know, the, the road surface makes to the road noise in an electric car. Obviously, you don't have the sound of the engine, but you still do have road and wind noise, and that's dependent on which tyres you've got, but also the road surface. I don't feel I've ever really captured accurately what the actual, you know, combination of road and wind noise sounds like in an EV. We, we know that the Ionic is not one of the quieter EVs out there, but it's still much quieter than, than most petrol cars. But I find when I record it with the GoPro audio or other audio, it just doesn't actually capture the sound as heard in the car. Uh, it's a bit of a weird one, that. I, I'll, maybe with some filtering and things, it's possible to do it. This particular route I'm driving here is the one I normally go if I'd be going towards Scotland. Now, I ever, never actually drove the Ionic to Scotland. There's this big thing in the UK of, oh, could you drive it to Scotland when you tell someone you've got a short-range car like an EV? And I drove my previous Nissan Leaf to Scotland. I just never drove the Ionic. And that wasn't to do anything to do with its range characteristics and so on. It was just family and work. And I didn't have time um, to go and enjoy Scotland, sadly. So, you know, that'll have to wait for another time in another EV, perhaps a rented one in the UK on a, on a return trip sometime. It's not something I'm going to be able to do in the Ionic, sadly, although I think it would be perfectly capable of doing that. Um, here, here's me tapping along to some music, you know, in my own little cocoon here. Um, enjoying this last drive in the car and heading off to the dealer. So what's interesting is that the drive to the dealer was one hour, pretty much door to door. Um, but getting back then to my house on public transport was three hours through a torturous first train journey. Well, it was a taxi to the train station to begin with, and then it was a train, and then it was a, a walk, as you'll see later, and then another train and another taxi to get home. So it might even, yeah, I think more or less it worked out three, three and a bit hours. So yeah, we're, we're just approaching now in this kind of, you know, sped up footage towards the Hyundai dealer that actually uh, bought my car. So this is DSG Hyundai in Morecambe. Now, they don't give me any money for saying anything about it, but the sale process was great. You might think, why did I sell at a dealer? And, you know, why didn't I sell it privately? Maybe I could have got more money. There were so many things going on in this last week in the UK. I, I drove this 1,000-mile trip, 1,600 kilometers, to do lots and lots and lots of things I had to do. Um, and I'd been going in and out of the car, you know, taking things, moving things, giving things away, taking things to the rubbish, recycling things. And I'd kind of had enough, really. And I was wondering if I was even going to be able to sell the car before going or whether I'd have to sort of do some kind of return trip to the UK and do a private sale and possibly have the risk of not having a kind of same-day transfer of the funds, someone ripping me off. You know, I was a bit risk averse in that sense because, you know, I just had so many things on my plate. Here I was just checking, you know, before handing the car over, had I left probably the only expensive thing I have, my, my Ray-Ban polarized sunglasses that my Welsh eyes need to drive almost in any circumstances other than complete cloud or night. Um, and then I went through basically what you should do before you, you hand the car over with an Ionic, which is, you know, unpair your Bluetooth devices, which with um, the Ionic, I'd never really saved locally onto the car, my telephone contacts or anything. I found that um, trying to delete previous addresses and things, obviously I, I deleted the address book, but deleting previous addresses, this is just the address of the dealer there, um, was a bit of a nuisance. It kept, you know, storing the previous things. So I had to make sure that I deleted those right up to the moment that I, that I handed over the car. 
Um, and here you press Bluetooth and then you go to Bluetooth connections if you want to delete your phone. And if you haven't, as I say, if you haven't downloaded anything, pretty much once you've unpaired it, nothing is left on the car and you can hand it over um, fairly clean. Because there's no car wing system, no app or anything, that at least means when you're selling it, there's none of that to do. Um, obviously I'm leaving the kind of wheel nut adapter and things like that in here, but yeah. Other than that, it's pretty good. So I think I'll switch it off for the last time. Yep, last power off, just recorded for posterity. Yep, and the last journey was that, yep, cool. Then I would just, you know, um, had a quick check in the boot. Um, That's my rubbish that I'm pulling out there. I had a sort of double-barreled foot pump and things uh, that I always keep in the car in case of punctures. When I first got a car, um, you know, as, a, as an adult, like not that many years ago, I had three punctures in the first three weeks of having it. I don't know what happened there, but I have always carried a foot pump ever since. Um, I had the vehicle certificate as well to hand over. I had one last look around the car. Sorry, this is a bit shaky. I'd had a really busy day the day I sold the car. I'd been to see my accountant in the morning and literally the evening before I'd driven back from Wales of 250 miles or something. Um, and this was just something that was possible. And, you know, it was all a bit sort of not frantic because the, the team at DSG... Uh, Hyundai and Morecambe made it very painless for me um, but I was still quite wound up and lots of things on my mind and lots of things to do but I wanted to have a quick sort of check over the car check it was all in good condition that I'd left it you know reasonably um, you know looking okay in that uh, my dad had kindly washed it and so on so it was looking very nice and um, yeah it was I think it was in good condition to hand it over there were a few dings on it that I hadn't spotted um, but the, the dealers took care of that and adjusted the kind of price they gave me accordingly in the the lot of uh, DSG Hyundai there in Morecambe they had this kind of fairly new um, Ionic Electric now I haven't seen Ionic Electrics like hardly any in the entire time I've had the car and then suddenly I'd seen one driving along like um, with a number plate only one digit different from mine and then a blue one in that thousand mile uh, sort of round road trip in Milton Keynes and then obviously at the dealer there, there were some ones there including that plug-in one and then there was the moment where they didn't want me to film obviously all the paperwork and stuff yeah so now we're jumping in time and space I'm in Denmark in the future from this video a few weeks on from having sold the car the one thing I did want to film you know handing the keys over kind of sliding them out of my hand a bit like the ring in Lord of the Rings because you know I didn't really want to let go of the car if we hadn't been moving out of the UK I did look into kind of importing the car into Denmark and just decided it was just too onerous not so much cost issues but you know just things that I thought yeah better to be you know to sell the car if, if there's a decent price offer and I thought it was a decent price offer I'll come back to that um, yeah, I, I wanted to film it kind of handing over in a comic way with the keys and stuff, but it had been such a hectic day with all this travel, and then I knew I had a kind of busy weekend ahead of sorting things out, and then flying out. This was kind of like the Friday afternoon I was doing this, and I was getting up really early Monday morning to fly to Denmark, and obviously had to spend some time with the family and do other things back in the UK. I mean, firstly, you know, yeah, I didn't want to sell it. I never lost the feeling with the Ionic that I had the first time I got in it that my dad expressed, actually, when we test drove it in maybe December 2017 or early January 2018. I don't quite recall when that was. Um, and we'd been driving a BMW i3 um, Rex, I think, the range extending uh, BMW i3 earlier that day in Wales. And, you know, that was quite kind of nice, but it had a bit of body roll and it was a different feeling and it was a four-seater only. And then we got in this Ionic Electric in very non-ideal conditions. You know, it was almost dark. It was cold. We had to defrost ice off the windscreen of the car. My daughter was with me in the back. Um, my dad hadn't really been in an electric car before. I'm not sure if he'd even been a passenger in my Nissan Leaf. I don't know. And we got in the car. My daughter put the armrest down in the back, kind of looked around at this sort of space and very low slung kind of feeling of the car. And my dad said, oh, it feels like a limousine, doesn't it? It feels like a limo. Um, and yeah, I never lost that feeling of it feeling like a really nice kind of, you know, comfortable, reasonable sort of spec um, family car. Nice to be in, comfortable to be in. I always had a nice driving position and feel and so on. So I really didn't want to get rid of it. Let's just kind of put that on the table. I would have kept it. I sort of knew when I bought it in January 20, 2018, that there was a risk that I might have to leave the UK. I knew that. I didn't know how big the risk was, so I thought, well, you know, I still need to get around. I'm sick to death of the Nissan Leaf, the 24 kilowatt hour one, and it's very limited range as it had become. I didn't want to go to, you know, anything other than full electric, even with the risks that involved. So the crucial thing for me at that time, making the decision was how much is this car going to depreciate? You know, how much uh, value am I going to lose off it? 
I'd bought the car with a, on finance with a personal loan, personal unsecured loan. It wasn't clear when the Tesla Model 3 was going to come to the UK, what price it would be, the new bigger battery Nissan Leaf and so on. But certainly I was thinking, you know, will this car hold on to its value? Will it become technologically obsolete as the Nissan Leaf had fairly quickly after I started leasing the Nissan Leaf? You know, a 30 kilowatt hour model had come out and then even later the 40 kilowatt hour model. But, you know, there's this weird thing that prices haven't really come down on these cars. You can get reasonable prices secondhand on, on Nissan Leafs and Renault Zoes, the kind of early ones with the smaller batteries. But this, the Hyundai Ionic Electric, I always kind of knew buying it at that time. There were virtually none in the country around the UK when I bought R1. Um, and some of them were selling them used, quite old used, at almost new prices. So I thought it was going to be, you know, strong. And I was surprised actually at the price on this one that I got, the January 2018 one. And... Um, you know, the, the dealer has asked that I not say what price he paid me for it, and I'm going to respect that because they really did right by me. I was, you know, rushing and frantic, and I, I kind of just wasn't sure what's was going to happen, and I had this liability of having the car while moving to another country. But just to say that, you know, that the car itself, not the price kind of, you know, versus the price I paid and the price I got, there's obviously some difference there, but the car itself has barely depreciated at all. So you can see the price that it's, you know, the asking price for it on the website. I'll put a link in the description if it's if it's still there. I haven't actually checked if it's sold yet. Um, but the car has barely depreciated at all in the time I had it, which I think is, is a good sign of how strong the resale values are on, you know, usable, good quality electric cars at the moment. I wouldn't have got rid of it if my circumstances hadn't changed. I'd still be happy with it. And after that 1,000 mile, 1,600 kilometer road trip experience, I'd be looking to do more longer trips now because I think the infrastructure has improved and things were working out fairly well. But, you know, actually by the time I sold it, because I'd driven so much that, that previous sort of seven, eight days, I was kind of ready to get out of the car, so I, I you know, didn't miss it immediately. My, my son said something hilarious to me, the kind of the weekend after this was the Friday afternoon evening that I'd sold the car. And he said, uh, Papa, did you delete the car? <laughs> and I, I said, um, yes. And he said, got to buy a new one, got to go to the shop, buy a new one. So this tells you a four year old's view of, you know, car buying and so on, let alone electric cars. But at least now the car is with a dealer, can offer you kind of finance and so on. If I wouldn't have been able to do anything with that, someone coming to me would have had to make a kind of same day transfer cash payment. Um, and it would have probably been above what the dealer gave me because I was going through the, if I'd have been going through the risk of a private sale. Um, and who knows how that might have worked out. It might have worked out okay, given that I've got a YouTube channel, it might not. It might have been a real problem and dragged out for weeks and months. I couldn't take that risk. I went with the dealer. I think they did right by me and I'm kind of happy with the whole process. All that being said, let's get to the crazy journey home that I had after it, because I think it's just hilarious, the fact that it was just a polar opposite to the experience of driving around in a, in a nice, smooth, quiet, consistent, calm, you know, pleasant to drive electric car like the Ionic. Preston. Manchester Oxford Road, Manchester Piccadilly, and Manchester Airport. As customers on this service, stand back behind the yellow line. And when boarding, please use all the available doors. Okay, it's about to get loud. <laughs> So imagine that for one hour, and that was my first train leg home. So remember, it was a taxi, and then a train, and then this walk across rainy Manchester. And of course, hey, look, Ionics are everywhere now, aren't they? But you know, that was just a hybrid model. And then it was another train leg home, followed by another taxi. So three hours door to door, and compare that to a kind of one hour point to point drive in my lovely Ionic Electric, which was my outbound, and this was my return journey. So I hope you liked the video of me selling the car, handing it over and so on. And uh, yeah, I don't still have the car that you can see me sat in now, which is quite strange. I'm kind of talking to future me here um, who doesn't have this car doing the editing. And uh, yeah, so as I say, there will be more videos coming from me. I'll be based in Denmark by the time you see this and I'll be looking for electric car options there. Um, it seems to be a bit of a challenging landscape. There's not that many YouTubers with electric cars in, in, in Denmark, either in Danish or in English. So I'm going to try and kind of maybe fill that gap, find out what's happening the, uh, Denmark in the world of EVs and, and how things are going, how easy it is to get one, whether you need a car in a country like that. Yeah, so hopefully you'll continue to follow the videos. I don't really know where things are going to go. Please do subscribe. Please do hit the notification bell. Um, I know that's a YouTube cliche like beyond, yeah, horrible kind of cliche, but it's quite important because, you know, the, the keywords and things of the videos that are coming up, you know, they might be slightly different and they won't have Ionic in it necessarily. So just make sure if you're subscribed that you do get notifications. 
um, just to keep up with the videos that I'll be putting out there because it'll be more of a kind of diary of, of trying to start from scratch really, starting all over again, finding a decent EV that's good for me, good for my family, uh, affordable, long range, that kind of thing, you know, reasonable to charge. So yeah, thanks for watching, subscribe as I say, and bye for now.